Gary's got the pod, number one dad, available where we find uh, finer podcasts as well. And uh, stand-up special, which I need to find on my list here. Ah, it could be worse, which is uh, out as we speak, free on YouTube. Leah Knauer is here. She does stand-up as well. Coming up, got some shows at the Ice House in Pasadena. That'll be August the 23rd. Good new revamped venue, the Ice House, right? It's gorgeous. Always a great audience, Always. Too. I've never done it. I've heard it's awesome. It's awesome. Everyone says it's like just a perfect, perfect venue. And the green room is like oh, really? decadent. Oh, okay. To die for. Yes. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And the it's food. a great audience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everything's great. It's awesome. Yeah, okay. owned by a bus, you know, the Lakers of, of Lakers fame. Mm-hmm. All right, what do we got, Leah? We got some news? We uh, got some news. Number one, Jennifer Lopez. This is hot news. Jennifer mm-hmm. Lopez files for divorce from Ben Affleck with no prenup. Mm-hmm. Jennifer Lopez has done what seemed inevitable. She filed for divorce from Ben Affleck. TMZ has learned, but there are major twists, including the symbolism of when she finally decided to do it. J-Lo filed legal docs Tuesday in L.A. <laughs> County Superior Court, but they were not filed by a lawyer. Jennifer filed pro per, meaning by herself and without an attorney. Mm, well, she's from the block. That's what they would do mm-hmm. back in the day. <laughs> right. Um, I would like to go one full year with no Sofia Vergaro talk and no J- J-Lo <laughs> talk. Like, just one year. Like, if somebody said to me, um, if somebody said to me, Adam, would you pay ten dollars to just go a year with you? Ne- you don't hear anything about J Lo, right? I'd be like, yeah, and then be like, how about Sofia Vergara? And I'd be like, nothing <laughs> that bitch had to say. You're not going to see it. Her talking about I'm her family it or love or what it's like to be single and fifty or any, uh, just nothing. I'd yeah. go, oh, that's definitely. And they go, all right, is it worth a hundred? I'd be like, I think, I think it is. I think it is, and we'll keep going. Like, I, I, I have a list of people that I would pay good cash, just a moratorium, just one year not to know what the fuck J-Lo is up to. Uh-huh. Yeah. Whether it's the marriage, the good, the bad, the in-between, the dropping of the album, the How video, many times the is marriage. How going to get married? It's just every time. It's almost like that's what she, that's keeping her in the news is the marriage. Yeah. So she's got to, now it's going to be, it's the boyfriend, and I'm going to marry this boyfriend. How old is this guy going to be? <clears throat> it's going to be on Ben Affleck's birthday, that, you know, the, the date that they, they get married. It's just going to, it'll be something to just keep her going. I felt that way like two years ago about Pete Davidson. Like, yeah. There was like a lot. $100 yeah. just not to hear who yeah. he's fucking or yeah. what he's up to or he's thinking about rehab or whatever it is. Just, just give me a year without hearing about what that guy's up to. What's right. the max you would pay? <laughs> well, you have to give me the celebrity. Like, are okay. we talking? J-Lo. Are we? Uh, Jay, look, <laughs> I'm wealthy. You know what I mean? So <laughs> Take for, it all. for me, I, I, I could go, I would. You, I'd could go, get, you could get rid of J-Lo, I think. You could get rid of her. Yeah, now listen, I'm out. not talking about anything nefarious. <laughs> I'm just saying I do not hear anything from J-Lo for a calendar year. That's worth 2,500 bucks. Might be able to get me up. 2,500? I might get up to five grand. Mm-hmm. I was uh, sitting around the other day at 7 a.m. being woken up by the garbage man. You know, me, right. me, me. I go, if I bought a house, I'd pay an extra 500 k to not have the garbage man before noon. Right. For the rest of your life. I get that. You know what I mean? Like, yes. that's money well spent. Sounds expensive, but really, yeah. over the course of 30 years, Lifetime, not, yeah. not that much. I that feel works. the same way with Jayla. Yeah. It's a good investment. And Sofia Vergara, I'd pay for that. Who's, Heidi who's, Klum, I wouldn't really pay as reading? much for. I'll give you 800 bucks. Yeah, Heidi Klum's Here's hot. what I'll do. I'll just get a kitty of about 40 or 50 grand, and you just tell me the celebrity, and we'll parse it out. You know <laughs> what I mean? But eventually, I'll be out the 50, but I won't have to hear from like 31 <laughs> celebrities for a year. I is feel J- like- I was going to say, is J-Lo really selling that much like I mean, it's what are they buying? That are the clicks that are really people clicking on? Let me hear this J Lo story. That like I I mean I get the Ben Affleck thing now, but it's like anything else going forward. What does she really have? That this they're they rec- unless she gets back with Mark Anthony. Mm-hmm. Right? Oh, that would, I, be, I that would be her move. Mm-hmm. I, there was a time I would have paid not to hear anything from Mark Anthony too, yeah. but he silenced himself. But I right. would definitely put some cash up for you. I feel like it'll die hack. down now that they're getting a divorce. I feel like she'll. Step back a little bit. 
Mm. Mark Anthony sings I Need to Know, right? Yeah. That is mm. quietly one of the shittier songs of the last 25 years. <laughs> it sucks. And it's also very self-aggrandizing. Like, yeah. I hear the one thing me. There's no, there's no real talent in that. I don't but, know what he is. Yeah. I, I really don't know. He's he was in the movie Man on Fire. It was. Yeah, and that was, but for a very, I mean, it's a small role, but they had a couple, couple, uh, couple lines, and then that's it, and then that song. That's all I know. And then I guess he's big in Latin America, or was, for a minute. It, not every Latin guy who can sing needs to be called a heartthrob. Can right. we agree on that? Okay, like, yeah. he looks like a Put wet... Put some money to that. He looks like that, a wet fucking rat yeah. to me. Like, why? Oh, look at him. He's a heartthrob. No, he's not. He right. sings... In Spanish. Yeah. That's as far as we got. <laughs> Doesn't make you good looking. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, she's on marriage number four. Yeah. Would you, would you, Gary, would you take the J-Lo marriage number five? <laughs> would I take it? Ah, oh, man. Well, I'm married already, so <laughs> j -Lo, I don't know. She doesn't do it for me. Back in the day, out of sight J-Lo with George mm -hmm. Clooney, I was mm -hmm. like, oh, my God. Mm. That, I was like, she is incredible. And now... And there's a, there's a there's a video of Ben Affleck. This is they were definitely having obviously they're having problems at this point. They're having problems probably from day one. They'd and, have to. And they're like, we're trying. Let's try this again. They definitely. You know, when they started dating, they're like, ah, oh, it's the same shit. Like, mm -hmm. You know, Ben Affleck dealing with her, and then uh, her dealing with him. But there's mm -hmm. a there's a video of him slamming this car door. Did you ever did yes, you see that? I saw that. And he's just so pissed off. And there's uh, photographers right there, and you could just see the just the the stain in his face. And you're like, mm -hmm. oh god. Mm -hmm. But uh, so that that video alone plays such a part. And yep, there it is. Yeah. He's. Well, he's angry Boston guy, and she's got to look be at his face. Look at how pissed he is. She she's keeping it together. She knows he just does not. He doesn't give a shit. She's just got to be a and royal pain in the ass. He should just not have opened the door for her. What the, what's the point of it? That what, yeah, that that, that it wasn't slant. the speed. You know, it was the fingers. No, the, no. What it what it was. <laughs> sorry, it wasn't the velocity of the door, and I wouldn't even call it an angry door slam it was the flare after mm -hmm. yeah. after he yeah. after he did it. Right. okay he did yeah. flip the, of the almost a follow through it was the follow through yeah. of the door shut if okay. he had st the, the actual speed of the door shutting and the velocity and the impact of the door was not great it was the hand flare it mm -hmm. was to get the fuck out of here with the hand also, if he's pissed, why is he walking her to the passenger side of the car? Right. Watch the flare. I, I, ah, I, yep. He did the hand across. That there's a certain joie de vivre to that, by the way. But it was it was a yes. follow through. Ooh. That's what made it. That's it. what made it the pissed shot. I love well, it. they've inspired me to never get back with any of my exes. <laughs> Shrewd. Well, people can't change. Maybe I, that's why I shouldn't. I shouldn't have looked for my dad. Is no, it, I, 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 uh, the saddest. I used, to, I used to sit on Loveline all night and people like, I want to find my dad who abandoned me. It's going to be yeah. horrible. Oh, it's it's going to be horrible. It's I never know. good because they're, are, they're the same person thought it was a good idea to abandon their family <laughs> right. X amount of years ago. They're still that person. Yes. Yeah, it's very hard for anybody to change. And she released that documentary about them in the same year that they divorced. Like mm. literally six months apart. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. Uh, all right. Kind of. He, yeah. Yeah. All right. And, well, and that prenup. It's okay. There's no prenup. Yeah, they why? both have money. She, I mean, he's got a lot of money too. So, I mean, they they have the, there's a. I know they're in the works of buying a house that was over sixty million. Yeah, and have, they have other properties too. So, I don't know. Well, here's the here's the maybe thing. he doesn't care. He's like just take whatever. <laughs> well, they went in. I don't know. I would kind of imagine that her net worth was more going in. Yes. But really? he made more well, money while they're together. More in his two could years. be his her net worth net worth was ninety million and his was sixty seven million or something like mm. that. But but as long as everyone's good, then I, I don't know if you need a prenup. Right. That's what wild. try to figure out what the net worth of each one was going in. Ben reportedly worth one hundred and fifty million. Hmm. Mm. J Lo reportedly four hundred million. So I was low. Which one wow. of them? Get, which one of them gets Matt Damon? That's what I'm <laughs> Ben yeah. for sure. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we wish those kids well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Okay. Number two, a Florida doctor was not wearing his hearing aid and couldn't hear colonoscopy patient screaming. 
According to the Florida Board of Medicine, Dr. Ishwari Prasad couldn't hear the patients yelling in pain because he wasn't wearing his hearing aids. Mm, I, this is a little weird, this story, because um, you don't lie there silently in pain Ooh. with a camera up your ass. There's movement. Right. Yeah. There's a lot of yeah. movement. I mean, there's going to be a penalty. You should be able to tap out just like, you know, <laughs> in a UFC fight. Yeah. Big John McCarthy. <laughs> yeah. right. You should be able to just lift your hand with <laughs> right. flop sack down. Just pull the, pull the hose out of your ass. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, a guy trying to put something in your ass and pretending to not hear you scream. I've seen that before. Yeah, I've seen enough prison movies to know <laughs> yeah. that uh, that's just not a likely scenario. Uh-huh. So, and also, it seems okay. It, it, okay, I agree. There's, there's, it seems very I, this unlikely. is a weird. Okay, let's take his side you, first, th- and then say that all, he really it's all true. And this will work if you tell me this took place in some. You know, this took place. In El Salvador mm-hmm. or something, I'll go. Okay, this is not a United States well, what's problem. Florida. Oh, all right. Let's I be, said it wasn't the United clear. States. Was that <laughs> your dad? <laughs> that was a grift. Right, right, dad right. Suing the, yeah, yeah. Suing the anesthesiologist. Yeah, guy, yeah, guy sounds right. like an asshole. I just had one of these procedures. There is an anesthesiologist, and a, it's not like you do it in a. St- storage facility alone with the doctor. There's three people standing right. around there, you know? Okay. So the anesthesiologist is standing there monitoring all the stuff because they're giving you a little more, a little mm-hmm. less. So if you're screaming in pain, Oof. there are other people in the room. Mm. The anesthesiologist would immediately be like, oh, the patient is up, you know, let me up the... Uh, uh, Propofol, mm-hmm. you know, or th- th- this a bogus story. I don't believe it. I mean, I believe something happened, uh-huh. but it wasn't what it is. You think uh, someone's like, exaggerating yeah. for a lawsuit? I think, well, it sounds the like news. it was several people that were complaining. It seems like this, the, the, the doctor What's the news involved. source? Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, the, here's what the I'm news with you on does. That. Listen, sounds phony we're, we're in USA a, Today. Mm, that's not, you know. Now, how many people came forward and said this? I mean, it's got to be. More than ten. Right? I, I'm I'm just telling you. For at least one procedure, he was not. The anesthesiologist is in the room, and this seems weird. Yeah, Florida so, doctors, eighty four. His uh, team was trying to communicate with him, and he couldn't even hear what his team was saying. But you're right; he would be like writhing in pain. They don't send yeah. you a text. Somebody's <laughs> hand goes right. up and starts waving if your team's trying to communicate with and he's, you. And he's how old? Eighty four. Yeah. Uh, Oof. I, I'm he, look. His hearing aid was on the fritz. It's fine. I don't believe yeah, it. I I, be, well, something happened. Yeah. This isn't quite it. This is. Listen. Be prepared. I'll tell people all the time. It's uh, oh, these high school kids from the Catholic school chase down and harass these bottlenose dolphins in Hawaii. It's like no fucking kid can chase down a dolphin in right. the sea. They say, oh yeah, they harassed them. It's like no, they didn't. Mm-hmm. No, they didn't. You, you, the kid swims at four miles an hour. Dolphin goes thirty five right. knots. They did not. This didn't happen. That's what the story says. I, it's all I get all day. So that, that's what it is. That's what happened. I go. It's not what happened. It's what the story. Mm-hmm. headline says which makes you want to read it but it's not really what happened i need more than one person one yeah. person saying that so this I is agree. half of what happened yep but uh all right we're not buying it not buying it all right all right uh there is a new loneliness cure apps that match you with strangers for a meal mm. a bevy of apps are trying to help isolated remote workers and others find new offline friends oh going dutch mm-hmm. yeah. I, that'd be a good name for this <laughs> yeah. one right online friends i like that yeah i think you gotta money. you gotta call it going dutch because there's always It's going to be an issue because Mm -hmm. you're going to like reach out to them and then you're going to sit down and have a conversation and then they're going to think you have to pay because you reached. What is the rule? Of paying with a friend or or what? Yeah. We pay for everything. So you're being a great friend. But I I think that I think the rule is whoever invites the other person to eat. Yes, yes I that, paying, right? that should be it. Or, but this uh, seems like a mutual decision, so I think you would split. But somebody has to reach out to the other person. That's true. But I think to avoid this, it's called going Dutch. Mm-hmm. It, is usually, I mean? it is usually yeah, groups. These are like groups of people. So it's oh, not one-on-one. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. But 
What do but you do? Yeah. We reach out. You're weird. I'm weird. We should all get <laughs> <Yeah>. together. <laughs> you're lonely. Right. I'm lonely. Let's get yeah. together. We're we're both. We both <laughs> just finished masturbating. Right. We're exactly. in our refractory period. <laughs> yeah. We're doing I'm a little hungry. soul searching. Yeah. I worked off some serious <laughs> calories with that last one. Third of the day. Should we just talk about something other than masturbation? <laughs> right. Yeah, it's gonna be hard. Literally, literally yeah. hard. Very hard. Yeah, I don't. I think it's nice, especially listen, if you move I'm, to a new city and you don't know anyone. That's nice to like meet different yeah. people that you wouldn't normally be meeting. It's well, tough. When I, I when I was it's not gonna be any big good. When I was <laughs> like, never will be. When I was trying to be a when I was uh, interviewing to be a Catholic Big Brother a million years ago and, and what I was a million years ago and um, they're just like sitting. It was like twelve dudes like sitting in a room and they're like, "Why do you want to be a Catholic Big Brother?" You know, they yeah. didn't. They didn't want weird, desperate dudes to mm. like sexually abuse nine year olds. You yeah, know? yeah, that's and fair. This one guy, I got kind of forced into it by someone in my Acme comedy troupe. But what the sex acts with the nine year olds? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. I didn't want to do it. I was hard, but I still didn't want to do it. Sick. I do like when people do. That. I got raped. Yeah, by yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah. But did you? You came, right? I yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. But what, I didn't what were you wa- wearing? I didn't it, want it. Yeah, you brought it on <laughs> yourself. Like, well, yeah. You came, though, yeah. right? Yeah, but I didn't. I didn't want it. Like, well, I don't know. It kind of sounds like something. You enjoyed it. Very party right. did, right? Yeah. So um, there was a guy, and he's just like, I just moved into town, and like, I'm lonely. Right. And I was like, oh, like I felt so bad. Uh, and yeah. I also thought this guy could rape a kid. Right, right, right. I got shoved into it, you know. Did you get chosen? Mm. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. You did? I, well, listen. I was like, uh, if you're going to disqualify me, I'm going home, you know, because it's not a great financial choice to be a Catholic big brother. You got to pay for everything and pick the kid up every week and, right. and do all that oh. shit. I didn't, date them. You got to yeah. date them, <laughs> wine them, dine them, you know what else. Yeah. <laughs> you know what rhymes with that. <laughs> the point is, is I didn't want to. I didn't really want to do it. So, you know, I was like, I sat there and they were like, you do drugs? And I was like, I don't do drugs, but if I'm at a party or something and a <laughs> right, joint's going right. around, I'm not out. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'm in, you know. Not and, a loser. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I'm not square, if that's what you're talking about. Not No narc here. And then they're like, how many times a day do you think about sex? And I'm like... Three times. Right. Seemed like a yeah. Seemed like a, 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 an answer. Can't say zero. Can't say zero. Can't say the real answer. Yeah, right. Twenty two hundred. Yeah, right. So I just Constantly. go three. Yeah, Sounded good. So uh, they just made me into a Catholic Big Brother. But wow. jo- Joe was a Catholic Big Brother too. What years were you? I think I think the last time I did it was probably six or seven years ago now, and I did it for about four years. But I remember. When you just said that, that they heavily promoted that one of the former bigs included comedian Adam Carolla. <gasps> really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Famous. Out in L.A. then. You yeah, out know. in L.A. Catholic Big Brothers and Big nice. Sisters down in Are you Catholic, LA. Joe? I mean, I was raised Catholic. Oh. But I, see, I'm, I'm, I'm an atheist. I was raised an atheist. I just got shoved into it. But yeah. That's interesting. So I got they promoted. They, yeah. they, they, you're a you're a headliner you're alumni, for yeah. the That's Catholic Big awesome. in LA. <laughs> That's so funny. All right. Well, uh, I don't know what the hell. What were we talking about? That's funny. The, the dating, the, apps. the da- or the, uh, the friend app. app. I'm, I'm, yeah. Look, look. I people use a computer to do everything. Mm-hmm. Why, why not this? Yeah. You know, we're, yeah, we're there. And at least it's no getting judgment. people out and about and meeting people in real life. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. All right. What's next? All right. Um, Fresno has the most chivalrous men in California, study finds. Really? It can be hard to find respectable men across dating apps, blind dates, and meet cutes, but a recent study found that women in Fresno may find it a bit easier than other women across the state. According to datingnews.com, in a survey of 3,000 women, Fresno was found to have the most chivalrous men in California. Fresno is ranked number one, Sacramento is number two, and San Bernardino is number three for having the most chivalrous men in their city. Are they using the word chivalrous that's correctly? What they said. I don't know. Uh, like that's a Ben Affleck type where you walk I, around and you right. open the door and then you. 
Well, like, how, and how are they finding this information? Is it the least amount of domestic abuse cases? And that's, see, that's, that's what, what I'm saying. I know Fresno. Right. I don't see a lot of guys yeah. throwing jackets down over water right. puddles for women to walk over. Right. And then and is somebody like taking that. notes when that happens? How, yeah. How they, I, uh, this is, What's the criteria actually, here? I don't believe the, it. This says the survey says some of the date behaviors most appreciated by the surveyed women include engaging and respectful conversations, mm-hmm. planning thoughtful and creative dates, and mm. offering genuine compliments. Also, twelve mm. percent of women value men who open doors for them, while another twelve percent appreciate punctuality and consideration for their time. Mm. You got to be punctual. Punctual is a given. Yeah. And And then a thoughtful creative date that is so important. Really? Yes. What's a thoughtful creative date for you? Like you want to go to a color me mine and silver light. Literally, that's exactly what I I was gonna say. Oh my god, you know me. Homo. Yes. I know that dude. (laughs) Something like, I don't know, fun where you're doing something different and telling me when I need to be ready, what I should wear, and then like don't I don't wanna think. I don't want to think. But this is more of like a tell me when to show up. Later time. A first date, you can't be telling, hey, you wear this. <laughs> like, okay, that's fair. Show so, up in a flight vibe. suit, bitch. But the, yeah. <laughs> but the vibe of it, like right. dress casual, dress formal. I would love that. Yes, Whoa. color yeah. me mine for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you need an ashtray, right, baby? <laughs> yes. So, all right, hold on a second. Have you ever been on a date to a color me mine? I haven't. And And what is your most creative date? That I've been on? That's correct. Okay. Um, there was one time went to um, my boyfriend took me to a I don't know what it's called like a jungle gym where you're you have it's like a ropes course mm-hmm. in um, Playa Vista mm-hmm. and you're like jumping around. First, it was really fun. First date? Uh, no. That well, like, I, you see, can't what, count dates with a boyfriend okay, of nine on, months. Okay. Exactly. I need a first date. It's actually five years. Um, so it's even worse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's not, you just do fun okay, shit after that. First date. I don't know. It's usually dinner. Right. Well, so how can they be creative? Nobody's going to be creative on the first. You also don't know the person. Are you going to spend money? Sometimes but if it's you a know coffee they're date. into a certain thing. Yeah. I And also like going to an escape room or a Color Me Mine or Laser yeah, Tag get out of or this. something. Like, like, sounds, <laughs> yeah, we got escape, escape rooms. Room. called my apartment. Yeah. <laughs> Have fun, bitch. I'm shutting the lights. No clues. Then <laughs> bolt the door. <laughs> um, so, all right. Wait a second. I also love escape rooms. <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, great. I, first date needs to just be a dinner and a conversation. Mm-hmm. Now, the guy, how would you feel if the guy said, look, I know the restaurant. This place is amazing. You'll love it. And I'll order for both of us. Would mm. that be okay? Personally, no. I want to order my own food. Mm-hmm. But if I tell him what if what I, I said want? you like beef, you like fish, you like chicken, like what do you like? Because once you tell me what you like, I got this. Mm-hmm. I got this. That's kind of hot. That's kind of hot. Okay. Taking taking control. I don't know. I personally like that. And mm-hmm. then a lot of feigned interest in whatever you're talking about, right? I like genuine interest. But yeah, but you won't be able to tell with me. <laughs> oh, I didn't know I was on the date with you. Well, I'm saying I'm a, I'm a skilled. No, not with me, but with uh, when I would go on a date, I would sure. my skill would be acting, feigning interest. Acting, yeah, acting you have to act interested, interested. Let them right. talk. See, this is why you don't live in Fresno. Yeah, I'm the numbers go down. Fresno, oh, you moved to Fresno. Like numbers have gone down in chivalry. Uh, I, Chivalry's dead here. The problem with people, or the thing about people, is they have no idea that when they're telling you a boring story that you're not interested because they're telling you the story so they think you're interested so then right. you just make noises and nod mm-hmm. and they think they're spinning a scintillating yarn mm-hmm. I haven't even <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> see yeah. what you just did mm-hmm. yeah too much not only that, I, <laughs> yeah, I'm not even out. hearing anything <laughs> I mean, there's nothing going in I'm yeah. just uh, <laughs> sure <laughs> right a lot of head nodding so <laughs> well I'm going to Fresno go to yeah. Fresno go. faint you have a boyfriend yeah, right maybe I'll bring him. Maybe I yeah. won't. Mm-hmm. It'll help. Maybe I'll see if he. If he what uh, was the first in. date for you two? Dinner. But I <laughs> actually I loved it because he said, "You pick the place and I will pay." And I loved that very direct mm-hmm. instruction because it's like right. I already know that I like the place and I don't have to do the like. Oh, let me hear. Let me take out my credit well, card. What kind of place and, did you pick? Um, it was Salazar. 
in um, Atwater Village. Do you know it? It's Mexican. It was so good. Mm. Is it expensive? Was no, it moderate. Moderate. That's good. And I picked. I you know I didn't right. want to do a formal thing because what if? Of course. Yeah, it was something in between. That's good. Did he pick you up? He picked me up. Were you ready? I was ready. Yes. And how'd you meet? We met doing improv. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There you go. Oh, okay. So you had, yeah. A yeah, little we'd familiar. already met. Yeah. 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 A little familiar. Yeah. So, and yeah. you can talk because everything you say, he goes, yes, yes and. and not only that, but <laughs> exactly. my stepmom's a cunt too. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, you were there. You yeah, never heard it all. I was there. I know how these conversations go. I was a waiter at Salazar back then, so. Oh, I yeah. thought I recognized yes, you. Yes, that's right. Not a great tipper. <laughs> that, this boyfriend of yours. I didn't pay. <laughs> so. All right, let's see. We got another story up there. Oh, sorry, I'm looking at the screen. No, I'm looking at your... your. Uh... I got nothing. All right, well, then let's keep talking about this one. <laughs> Chivalry what do you dates. guys? What do you guys think, like, as men, what do you think is a good, fun date? A if mine is date? color me mine, let's get rid of well, I dinner. I don't know what that is, by the way. I was, like, I was, I was just saying, yeah, it's oh, just like, it's like, a, pottery, like I wouldn't have done Franchise it. pottery, pottery store. Pottery painting. Oh, God. It's arts and crafts. Yeah. <laughs> you get that stuff and then you color it in with glaze and then they bake it for you. Well, I can tell you what is a bad date. A bad okay. date is that, for sure. Oh. And then, and then uh, no. I, I mean, because a guy's not, who, what guy is going to be interested? Or a guy that you'd actually won't care about. Mm-hmm. That's I mean, fair. I mean, is this, did your boyfriend? No, we've never done that. Okay, yeah. He's good. straight. All right, good. <laughs> yeah. Right. But you so want to go to Color Me Mine. Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. And uh, a bad, a and bad date. A movie is a bad date. A first date for Agreed. sure because mm-hmm. you can't talk. And if you yeah. are talking, you're that, those assholes. A yes. comedy show for sure. Mm-hmm. It, I look at it as a bad date too. Yeah. Because the, again, you can't talk and you're just sitting there. What are they laughing at and all that stuff? Yep. Well, okay. Let's let's try to figure this. But out. You see a lot of first dates at comedy shows, of course. Yeah. Well, let let's. I, I mean, it kind of depends what you think your strength is Mm -hmm. you know what i mean like if you look really good in shorts like if you look good in a bathing suit then you go there's this beach volleyball thing going on and we all whatever because that's you like looking good Mm -hmm. You, you know what i mean but like maybe that guy maybe the guy who's really jacked not a good talker. Mm. So he wants to go on, on a mountain bike thing or something so he can put the shorts on and you can right. you can see him, you know. So it's like I you know, Gary, you you're a comedian, so you're a good communicator, like you're a good talker. So it would behoove you to go, Oh, we'll go on a date, there's this quiet place and we'll mm-hmm. go to dinner, you know, and we can really get to know each other. Exactly. That. But there's some dudes that are like meatheads and they don't have a lot to say. Totally. Now they don't know they're meatheads, but I mean, like I can think of some buddies I went to high school with. Is like that guy shouldn't be getting a ton of FaceTime with anybody because he's a <laughs> fucking meathead. But he should be getting in his bathing suit in front of people, right? Mm. So, and, and I guess he could go to a comedy show and just sit there, and he looks good enough that he doesn't have to say anything. His his strength is not talking. He's like biding his time yes. by like keeping it going longer by not talking. Yeah, right. like let's go horseback riding. Because that's good for a meathead who's like kind of athletic, who looks good in tight jeans right. and can handle a horse. And then she's going to she's gonna ascribe all these magical powers to mm-hmm. him about how smart he is and funny he is. But the more he opens his mouth, the more that's disproven. Completely. See what I'm saying? Yep. So I would, I would think it kind of like your boyfriend's an mm-hmm. improvisational mm-hmm. guy. So he'd go, well, I know how to talk. Yeah. You know, like mm-hmm. it would behoove me to get them into this place. But yeah. like others might want to go kayaking or something because they're not You're quite giving me so... such good date ideas. Thank you. <laughs> Horseback yeah. riding, kayaking, it sounds fun. Yeah, so we're ruining this guy's life. <laughs> <laughs> I know he's, he's gonna like, hate you guys. I'm busy. <laughs> I'm busy. So I guess it depends what you think your strengths are, because you say a movie is Bad for the first date, which yes. I agree with. Yeah, because you can't talk. But not if you're not, not if a good, you're not yeah. a real good talker. And but you mm. look good. The yeah. worst date I ever went on was a movie, and he took me to. Do you remember in like 2012 when Beauty and the Beast was like brought back oh, yeah. to it was theaters? Like, was it a Broadway show or like no, a, or it was, singing? Yeah, it was like, like live, right? Redigitalized or something? Oh. No, not that one. Like longer than that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Sorry but it was, for that date. I took you. It was the <laughs> movie. 
that I'd already seen when I was like 10. And he took me to see that and made me pay. Oh, shit. Uh, yeah. Made you pay? And then we're not talking. And I'm watching this movie that literally I've already seen a thousand times, but he'd never seen it. And it was like so bad and made me pay. <laughs> pay for your ticket. Pay for my ticket. Oh, yeah, wow. pay for my ticket. But it was like re digitalized. So it was a, a premium ticket. It was like a $30 ticket. I was, I left <laughs> pissed. I'm like, I can't believe I just watched Beauty and the Beast. Didn't talk. It was horrible. Yeah, that's bad. And he wanted to go on a second one. He thought it went well. That's what's crazy. After a bad date when guys are like, this was awesome. You're like, no, it fucking wasn't. <laughs> guys are thick. Very you know? thick. They don't read the room very well. Yeah, what's going on with that? Uh, you what's know. Wrong? What's wrong with you guys? Guys don't it's really. Hard, yeah. People don't know how they come across to others and maybe we're all <laughs> guilty yeah. guilty of that you know but they don't know that like things like that. forcing you to buy your own ticket to the movie he wants to see is just you yeah that's just, shitty also it's 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 the worst investment ever because you're never getting a blow job no. you know right, right. and it could have been the best blow job money ever spent you Beauty know and the beast yeah. and a bj yeah, that's yeah. right for 30 bucks for 30 yeah. bucks come right. on yes that's what like i'm saying like why and then what are you hoping to accomplish in this transaction, yeah, you know your, what I mean? Like, where it's a movie I want to see, you got to buy your own ticket, and ha and then what? Yeah, right. And why would there be a second date? You know, you're going to see Aladdin, and you're going to have to buy, <laughs> you're gonna have to buy the popcorn. Like, fuck this guy! I don't trust yeah. him. Never saw him again. Do you guys have a worse date? Um, I, I, I've had. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I, I've been. I got set up with a couple of psychopaths. I, oh. I, I went on a date with a girl where we went. I, it was tough because I had no money, you know. But I still kind of realized, like, I needed to, I needed to pay, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> and um, I worked out this what I thought was like a scam. Like I knew this guy. His name was Ron Braun, and he was a nice guy. Ron and Braun, you made that Ron up. Ron Braun was his name. <laughs> Ron Braun. Gay couple and, and his boyfriend, and, and I was the carpenter mm -hmm. for them. I built them. It was the first time I fell in love with the gay lifestyle because yeah. he's like, Ron was like, can you build me a bed? I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll build you a bed. I bet that can wasn't you, the only thing you were nailing. <laughs> can you build my boyfriend a bed? Yeah. I was like, you have two separate beds? He's like, yeah, yeah, we sleep in separate bedrooms. I'm like... I like the sound of that. Like, well, maybe, maybe, maybe I could do this gay thing. Maybe, I, maybe there's a little too much prejudging going on in the gay lifestyle. Yeah. Like me calling everyone a homo all through high school. That wasn't really derogatory. Yeah. So um, I would go to his restaurant, Muse, on, uh, I don't know, I don't know. Look up. I mean, it was a famous restaurant. It was a hot spot I restaurant that. called Muse on like La Brea or something on like West LA. And and Ron was cool. Like and I'd be like Ron, mm. uh, I got a chick and I'm trying to impress her, but you know I don't have any money. And he'd be like, Well, I got about uh, 150 bucks worth of junk you can do around here at the restaurant. And I would go in and work as a carpenter, and I work, you know, I'd do like an eight hour job, you know. Mm -hmm. And then I'd like, Okay, Ron, are we good for tonight? You know, or tomorrow night? And he'd go, Yeah, we're good. That's romantic. And then I'd walk in. And I'd, I'd be with the chick, and I'd be like, yeah, the guy that owns the place kind of a friend of mine, you know? And it was a hot, like, yeah. L.A. spot. And Ron would see me, like, hey, man, hey, Adam, hey, Ron, how you doing? You got my table over here? Oh, yeah, yeah, no, we're ready. Right. You know, and then they'd bring us all the food and do all the stuff, and then at the end, it'd be like, listen, your money's no good here, you know? Yeah. We're, we're good. Th thank you for coming in, Mr. Carl. That <laughs> would impress wow. me. That's awesome. Yeah, except for I had to do eight hours of carpentry yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. Know, that, that like, day. She's like, why are you so dirty? <laughs> <laughs> You're covered in caulking yeah. and sawdust. <laughs> yeah, yeah the, the restaurant muse, did they have like a history on it or, or any anything? It was just a really hot restaurant. <gasps> I've been like here. hot L.A. restaurant mm -hmm. from the 80s, 90s, I've you know, and, and beyond. They and didn't open mic. Do they do open mics there? I have no idea. Okay, I, think they I, do. I dropped off at some point, and then Ron died of like hepatitis C or something. Yeah. Oh. Like he died young, and and then that was like Jeez. that was it. But cool guy. I mean, you know, 
Gay couples are the best or the worst. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> really. And, and you're right. You know, it can go. There's a lot of latitude with the gay, right. the gay people. But Ron was cool, and I work on Ron. This must be a modern picture. I did booze. We had, like, booze and everything. I don't know. Does it say anything? Is there anything online, like, memory, like, restaurant <laughs> memories row or memories. something? Or, like... They have an old Ace air conditioner. In Muse there. in Los Angeles. Like, I wonder if there's... Was it Muse on 8th? No, oh, I don't think it was on Eighth. I think it was like on like uh, La Cienega or La Brea. It was like on La Brea or something. But uh, the point is, that the scam was <laughs> do the fix all the shit for Ron, and then get the cool guy, right? James make Bond him, treatment. Make him look, yeah, make him look special. Make make me I look like special. It. Yeah, that's the way I rolled. Not have you buy a ticket to Thank you. Cinderella or whatever Cinderella. it was. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Nate Silver, statistician, writer, poker player. That Nate Silver is going to join me mm. in a second. Yeah. Uh, Gary Veter, number one dad's the name of the podcast. You should find that wherever you listen to finer podcasts. I don't know if you have uh, dates, Gary, coming up. Um, yeah, I do have a, I have a bunch of dates. I'm in uh, Jersey. I'm in Plymouth, Massachusetts, Plano, Texas. Uh, Where should people go? The easiest place to go is uh, go to GaryVeter.com, and I post uh, my show dates there and uh, keeping it up to date. And then you could also grab the special, check out the podcast there. Everything's linked up on my website. So. Leah, <coughs> Leah's going to be at the Ice House coming up. Uh, August 23rd. 